Hello, my name's Bev and I'm the author of the book Please Eat, A Mother's Struggle to Free Her Teenage Son from Anorexia, which describes our family's battle with the deadly eating disorder, anorexia nervosa, which my teenage son Ben developed back in 2009 when he was just 15 years old. This post from 6th of May 2011 looks at the way sometimes I felt that CAMS weren't being helpful as regards Ben's recovery, which was a bit of a shame because they were the treatment team. And um, anyway, this this particular blog post is called CAMS Can of Worms? Question mark. Sometimes I wonder if our CAMS visits are just opening up a can of worms that is better left on the shelf. What I mean is, Ben and I are now a pretty close-knit team. These days he's happy to talk to me about pretty much everything to do with his eating disorder and anything else, basically, because he knows I get it. We are also very similar people. I know the current issues as regards his recovery and everything is going reasonably well despite the odd blip which is only normal in what is bound to be a bumpy ride to a certain extent. Basically I believe I know pretty much what is going on inside his head these days. At this stage we go along to our CAMS meetings wondering what needs discussing. In fact, I asked Ben if we'd be better off reducing the number of sessions to, say, fortnightly rather than weekly, as I often feel I'm more helpful to Ben than they are, especially since we started the contract. Then we get to CAMS and they get out the can opener and out come the worms. For instance, we start discussing something in depth that I'm not at all sure is helpful. Yes, it's stuff that's still there, that's that's quite a bit still there, but sometimes analysing stuff can be less helpful than dealing with it as you go along, or talking about it when you feel like it, not, not when it's forced out of you. In other words, I sometimes feel that cams delve deep into Ben's soul and bring up stuff just for the sake of it rubbing salt into a wound that would be better left to heal itself in the fresh air. I can always tell when this is happening because Ben starts to get flushed patches on his face and gets quite annoyed with what can only be described as a what the hell are we talking about this for expression on his face. Difficult to explain what I mean but as a mum you have a certain gut instinct about these things. What definitely isn't helpful is when CAMs start discussing target weight. It's usually fine when there's just the psychiatrist present, but for some reason her colleague, who sometimes sits in on our session, goes all over the place with regards to Ben's weight, throwing spanner after spanner into the works. One week she's saying he's under the healthy weight for his age and height, which he is, and the next, she's implying he's OK, as he is, and could, in effect, choose to stay that weight if he so desires. Which, of course, is music to an anorexia sufferer's ears, hey? One moment she's calculating his BMI as such and such, and then, without his core weight actually having changed at all, stating he's another BMI. These mixed messages are not okay. They confuse Ben and they result in him looking daggers at me, accusing me of forcing him to get fat because I insist that he needs to put on more weight. Looking at the World Health Organization BMI chart for age for boys, Ben is way underweight, so I'm not picking out a weight from the ether. Also, the psychiatrist regularly agrees that Ben is under the healthy weights for his age, sex and height. Then her colleague chips in and spanners go flying into the works. The result is the kind of triangulation undercurrents so loved by the eating disorder, the anorexia demon, who never misses anything like that. I say this from bitter experience. As you and I know all too well, everyone involved, treatment team and parents, 
has to be on the same page when it comes to recover recovery. Otherwise, the eating disorder zooms in and takes advantage of the discord. The good news was that at the end of the session, they actually suggested that we reduce our sessions, which is not a bad thing, hey? And I may suggest that we only need to see the psychiatrist from now onwards. And that's the end of that entry. And it just shows the kind of thing that I was juggling with at the same same time as everything else. And later at that week, we were going to head down to London to the family funeral. And um, I might as well just read this entry because it is really half a page long, that's all. And it's from Friday the 6th of May 2011 and it's called Crazy In-Law Family, Here We Come. So tomorrow we're off to London to my husband's crazy family for the funeral and a weekend of haphazard eating and goodness only knows what else awaits. One thing is certain, it's not going to be a smooth ride as there's always some kind of extreme trauma going on with someone in the family which results in the whole family talking about nothing else all weekend. And meanwhile, I have Ben and his eating disorder to worry about. No one could accuse us of leading a boring, uneventful life but I sometimes wish that we did. And that's the end of that blog entry and in the next video I'll talk about what happened when we went down to London to the funeral. Thank you for listening. You'll find a link below to my blog and you'll also find a link to my website where you can download free PDFs of my blog and also a link to Amazon where you can buy a copy of my book.